guys. So this first section here is just for you to review the different biomes and the main characteristics of those biomes from your text. So tomorrow we'll be working on our project. So this is where we're going to start our notes today on ecosystems and we've already talked about abiotic factors and biotic factors. Abiotic factors include air, nutrients, water, soil, and light. Where biotic factors, are, that word bio means living, so the biotic factors are the living things, which include plants, animals, and microorganisms. So microorganisms just being very small organisms. And this word here that we're going to be adding, where organisms live, is one you'll want to add to your vocabulary. So a habitat, where, or where an organism lives. So you may actually remember that word from being aware of what's going on in the news, especially with climate change. Um, let's take a little bit look at these abiotic factors that we've talked about. The first one I want to focus on, the first one I want to look at specifically is oxygen, which is probably one of the most fundamental abiotic factors. And oxygen is produced by green plants and certain microorganisms. So it's not only plants that create oxygen, there are a few microorganisms that do the same. And it's used by animals and most of the other microorganisms, the ones who don't produce oxygen. The next one that's key to our ecosystems are nutrients. And nutrients often enter the food chain with, again, plants and are important for growth. So the nutrients specifically that we'll be focusing on include nitrogen and phosphorus. The third one that we'll be looking at is light, and light is key. Light is required for photosynthesis, which is the process in which plants convert and store the sun's energy into starches and carbohydrates. Starches and carbohydrates. Okay, and that's where we get our energy from as animals. And then the last one is soil, which not only contains water um, and nutrients, it's also the home to many plants and animals. So below, and again, you don't have to do this right now, but I need it done for the weekend, and we'll talk about it probably on Tuesday. Just sketch a picture that illustrates how these factors interact with each other. So I want you to identify how sunlight interacts with, um, say, water and soil, and how do these, these factors all interact each, with each other. Use arrows to highlight those interactions. Now, biotic interactions in ecosystems include um, community, population and species. So a community refers to all of the organisms that interact within an, an ecosystem. So if you look in this little diagram here, you see there's birds, there's a couple of rabbits. Any, any organism within an area or within an ecosystem is part of the community of that ecosystem. The population refers to all of the members of a certain species within an ecosystem. So you might be talking about a population of um, rabbits or birds or um, ants and then a species refers to all of the organisms within an ecosystem that have the same structure who can reproduce uh, with each other so the species in this case would be rabbit so what I want you to do here is to label this diagram from smallest to biggest uh, biome community ecosystem organism population and species and I'm going to do the first one with you so the first one I'm going to identify is biome, okay, which is the largest of this system. So if we go, okay, so for this diagram here, the biome would be represented by our largest area here, or spot A. Okay, so there's our biome. The smallest of these would be an organism. So the organism would be the base of our system here. So I want you to fill out the rest of this, okay? So let's move on to biotic interactions within populations. So we have something called symbiotic relationships. And a symbiotic relationship just means that there are species that live together in a close proximity and they interact with each other. And so there's three different ways that they can interact. The interaction can be termed commensalism, which is where one species benefits and one is not affected and we can represent that by one species has a positive effect from the relationship and one has no effect from the relationship. And an example of this would be barnacles on, barnacles on a whale. 
The next one is when both species benefit from their interaction, which is called mutualism. And so both species have this positive um, interaction from this relationship. And an example of this would be a bee gathering nectar from a flower. Okay, and the third one is parasitism, where one species benefits and the other one is harmed. And an example of this would be hookworm in a dog. Okay, so on pages 30 to 40, 40 to 43, um, there's some examples of commensalism. I believe there's three for commensalism, crimson anemone, Spanish moss, and barnacles and whales. So I want you to just fill in this chart for the positive neutral interaction. I want you to do it again for mutualism, where both species have a positive interaction. I believe there are four pollinators, squirrels, bullhorn, acacia bush, and lichens. And then the third white is parasitism, where one is a positive effect and one has a negative effect from that relationship. And I believe the book has hookworm and the mountain pine beetle for you to look at there. The next is the idea of niches, competition, and predation. A niche refers to the role an organism has within an ecosystem. And an organism niche includes the way in which the organism contributes to and fits into its environment. So in your textbook on page 44 is the blue heron. And I want you to go through there and just figure out how does this blue heron fit into its environment? What is its niche? Competition occurs when a resource is desired by two or more individuals. So it usually means resources are limited, so different animals will be fighting over that resource. And it also limits the size and health of the individual and possibly that population. So this picture here you see um, there's some food and we have three different individuals who are competing for that food source. The last relationship I want to talk about is predator-prey. And hopefully we'll have time to um, play a game with that one. So predator-prey relationship is the relationship between the predators, which, who are the eaters, and the prey, who are the eat, eaten. So predators will eat the prey. And predators have many adaptations that make them suitable um, for their particular environment so that they're able to catch their prey. So some major adaptations are things like really good eyesight or good sense of smell. And then a third would be fangs or those really sharp um, teeth. Prey also have adaptations to help them avoid their predators and things that they might have are things like spines, shells, camouflage, and Mimicry. Okay, so mimicry, they're able to mimic other animals. So you can see here, um, we have a moose and the wolf. The moose here is the prey, the wolf the predator. And you can see as, as the population of the wolf decreases, there's fewer predators, and so the population of the moose increases. So as the predator decreases, the moose increases. The same thing happens is as the as the predators increase, they start consuming more of that food, more of the prey, and the prey decreases. And so this is a relationship that is in constant fluctuation. As one rises, the other de declines. Okay, the last little bit today I want to talk about is biodiversity. And so bio, again, meaning life. Diversity is diverse uh, differences. So biodiversity relates to the variety and number of different individuals and species in an ecosystem. So an ecosystem generally has a high biodiversity if it's healthy. Um, most losses to biodiversity comes from loss of habitat. And so we hear about that quite often as the habitat decreases, um, the biodiversity decreases, and the ecosystem suffers. Um, humans generally tend to have a negative impact on biodiversity. And we know this, and so what we're trying to do now is trying to lessen our impact in order to maintain the biodiversity. And so there's a lot of programs and um, such that are aimed at doing, so that, doing that. So ecological management are used to try to balance human progress with maintaining diversity. Okay, and I think that is all we're going to do today. 
and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>